What's up guys, Alvaro Ribeiro here. If you just got your first resin 3D printer and don't know how to use it, this is the video for you. Today we are all excited here at Loot because we just received the Ultimate Budget 3D printer, the Sonic Mini 4K from Frozen. This is a resin printer capable of producing very small miniatures with amazing details, as you will see. I will make a quick unbox and show you everything you need to know to set up your printer and use it for the first time. I will show you the necessary materials to get started, how the printer works, how to prepare the 3D files and how to print and finish them. We will go from a STL file like this to an awesome mini like this. Before I do the unboxing of this beauty, here's a list of other materials you need to get started. The first thing you need are disposable gloves. They are very important because the resin and the alcohol we use are toxic and may cause damage to your skin. Next, we need some isopropyl alcohol. It is used for cleaning the models after the 3D printing, as they come with a lot of uncurried resin around them. Take care when using or storing it, as it is a toxic and flammable product. It's also very good to have some precision pliers to cut and remove the supports of the models without damaging them. For finishing the curing process after the models are printed, we need a UV light source. We can leave them at the sun, but you need a sunny day and the process takes much longer. Nowadays, the companies are releasing some curing stations, but a very good option is to buy these UV lamps used for gel nails. They are very cheap and work really well. To remove the excess of supports and give a final touch-up to the models, we can use a scalpel and different type of files. I have some precision ones, some simple nail files and some sandpaper. Each one is better depending on the situation. And to glue the model pieces together, you can use any kind of super glue. This one works really well for me. These are the basic materials you need to get started. There are some other simple ones I will show you during the video, like paper towels, but they are very usual to have at home. No more waiting, now let's unbox the Sonic Mini 4K. simple but beautiful. The design is very similar to the regular Sonic Mini, but this yellow cover makes it look like a much more premium product. I hope it doesn't get dirty after some prints. Now let's see what comes into this small box. There is a user manual that I'll probably never read. These small things are for attaching to the printer bottom for better stability. 
There is a sandpaper for sanding the build plate in case your models are detaching during the printing. A USB driver to put the 3D files you want to print. There is this tool and some screws to level the build plate. A plastic scraper. The power supply. A funnel. A pair of gloves. A metal scraper to remove the printed models from the build plate. And the build plate itself. To assemble the printer, it is very simple. I remove the cover, glue these things here, and put the build plate in this spot. Before we start playing with the printer, I will explain in a very simple way how these resin printers work. It actually isn't a very complex machine. It is made up of a few parts. If I remove these nuts, I can remove this piece, the vat, that is where we will pour the resin. Here there is this transparent part, that is the fab film. For printing our models, we will use this resin that is liquid. It cures and gets solid when it gets in contact with UV light. So inside the printer's body, there are some very strong UV lamps that will cure the resin. The 3D objects are created from the result of curing multiple layers, sometimes thousands of them. So to control the UV light coming from below, there is this 4K LCD screen between the UV lamps and the FAP film. This screen will draw each layer that will be projected to the build plate. And this is the build plate that is where the models will be printed on. The 3D models are printed upside down and they will be attached here. This is the maximum area that we can print with the mini 4K. You can print anything bigger than that. With the vat back to its place and the nuts very tight, we can see that the fat is placed between the LCD screen and the build plate. And here is where we will pour the resin to print something. While printing, there will be a small pool of resin. The build plate will go down until it almost touches the fat, leaving just a small gap. Then the UV lamps will turn on the LCD will project an image and, in this gap, the resin will be curved in a specific shape, forming the layer. After a few seconds, the build plate will move up and down again, this time a little higher, forming a new gap, curing a new layer and so on. This way, after multiple layers, the 3D object will be created inside here. As a resin curves with UV light, we can leave the bottle or the printer open for a long time because the resin will start curing with the sun. So during all this process, make sure that the cover is on the printer. Here at the front of the printer, there is other LCD touch screen that we will use to control it. On its side is where we attach the USB driver with the 3D files. At the rear, there is a power supply connection and the switch to turn the printer on and off.
For the first time you use the printer, it is very important to level the build plate to make sure it is perfect aligned with the LCD screen. The first step is to loosen the screws from the build plate. In this case, we have four of them. On some printers, it is a little different, but the idea of leveling is the same. After that, we can see that the build plate is free to go up and down. If you feel that it's a little stuck, you can try to lose this top part a little, to the point that it's steady, but not super tight. Now it is much easier to move the build plate. The next step is to remove the vat. Just be careful not to damage the fat fuel, so I'll leave it on its side. Now I'll take a regular sheet of paper that I cut to fit in this area and place it on top of the LCD screen. We use this to level the build plate without touching the screen. Now with the printer already on, we can see the menu of the front screen. It is a little different on each printer, but in the Sonic Mini 4K, to start the process, I'll click Tools, then Z Calibration, and Next. See that the build plate is moving down. Make sure that you have loosened the screws. Otherwise, you can damage your printer. We use this to level the build plate without touching the screen. This way, we make sure that it's aligned, but there is a little gap between them. Now, we push the build plate down just a little, enough so it gets in full contact with the LCD screen. Use a little pressure, but be careful not to damage the screen. Now, while you keep pressing it, start to tighten the screws. At first, tie them just a little. Once the four of them have a little pressure, you can tie them more. Ok, now just press down and the printer is already leveled and ready to work. I'll just put the vet back to its place. Ok, so now the printer is ready to run, but to print something, we need some cool 3D files. In this case, I'll print Uten Ironhar, the blacksmith that we created at Loot. The 3D files usually are in STL format, but before we send them to the printer, we need to do some simple steps. So let's go to the computer, so I can show you what we have to do. So the first step is to download this software called Cheetobox. It's a free software, I'll leave the link below. Just click here, uh, register and download. The Tito box is already open here and I'm using this version 1.7.0. Depending on when you are watching the video, you might have a newer version. The Tito box is a slicer software. Basically, it will take the 3D objects, usually in STL format, Slice them in multiple layers and create uh, a video that the 3D printer is able to read. Depending on your printer, maybe you have to use a different software, but I, I think about 90% of the market today use the Cheeto Box slicer, so it's the most popular right now. Once you open Cheeto Box, the first thing you have to do is to select your printer and printing settings. So for this, click here on settings and here is the list of your 3D printers. As I am using the Sonic Mini 4K, I'll go to here, add new printer, 
choose the Frozen brand and here I have the Sonic Mini 4K which is my printer. I click OK and now it is added to the list. As I said before, I have at the moment three different printers from Frozen. A Shuffle, a Sonic Mini and now a Mini 4K. And here are the settings of my printer. Here's the resolution of the LCD screen. Here the maximum printing volume. And if I go to here, print, uh, there are a lot of different settings. Like how many seconds will the the lights cur each layer. Uh, I, I, I won't get into much details in this video as this will be probably your first try time with a 3D printer. So don't bother with all this. Usually with standard settings you will be fine. Most 3D printers are compatible with different brands resins. But if you are getting started at the moment, I highly recommend you to use a resin from the same brand of your printer. Because like this, you will probably have a setting that will work perfectly for you. For example, with the Sonic Mini 4K, I bought the resin from Frozen, especially designed for this printer. So now I will choose the settings for this resin. If I click here at profile, there is a big list with different resins, some from other brands, but the resin that I'm using is this one, the Frozen Aqua Gray 4K. So when I click here, all the settings are optimized for this resin. I don't have to worry uh, about this. The exposure time, the uh, bottle layer count. L like I said, if you want to use a different resin, maybe you have to change a little the, the numbers here, but I will leave this for another video. It's a more com uh, complex process. Sometimes you have to make tests to find the, the perfect settings for your printer. But for this case, if I use a Sonic Mini 4K with the Aqua Green Gray 4K resin, I won't have any issues. Okay, so I have my printer, I have my resin, I can close this, this page. This blue square represents the printing area of my printer, the build plate that you saw before. If I have an object that is bigger than this area, it won't be possible to print it. To move your camera here is very simple. If I use the right click of the mouse, I will rotate the camera. If I use the left click, I will grab the camera. And if I use the mouse scroll, I will zoom in or zoom out. Now I can import my 3D files that I want to print. In this case, I will print a very cool character from Loot, which is Yuten Ironheart, our blacksmith. If you want to download and print Yuten for free, I'll leave the link below, so you just have to click there and download your files. To import the files, I just go to here, open file, find the folder where it is it, and in this Uten case, we have two different scales from Loot. We have 32 and 75 millimeters. So I, I, for now, I'll choose the 75 millimeters. Um, and we have two folders, not supported and supported. Which means that for 3D printing, you have to place supports uh, for your model in specific areas. It's a little complex at the beginning, a very boring process, but luckily, for loot, you don't have to worry about it. Our models come pre-supported. So I will choose the supported version. And here I will choose the T2Box folder and open the T2Box file. And here I see the model. With a better angle, we can see how detailed this character is. Here at the right, I have a list of every model on the screen. And here it's important to say why we have two different models, two Uten. One model is hollow and one is solid. And we can see it by just by dragging this 
slider here. This slider represents each layer of the 3D printing process. For example, here we are at the layer 729. To print this whole model, it will take 1653 layers. And if I go down here, I can see that this is the solid version and this is the hollow one. And why would we hollow a model? Mainly for two reasons. The first one is that if we print it hollow, we will save a lot of resin. And resin isn't cheap, right? But also, when we, ho we hollow the model, we have smaller printing layers. This one is very big it is, and this one we have only this small area which means that we will have less probability of issues during the printing because of the suction of the printer. I won't get to details right now, but keep in mind that usually hollow models are safer. When you print big and solid models, the chances of having issues during, during the printer are much higher. So here I will delete, click delete on the keyboard, all the solid pieces and leave only the hollow ones. For the hand, it is so small that we don't need the hollow version. So, I will print a solid one. Also, it is important to say that for hollow models, usually we have some holes. Like here, under the anvil, here on his arms, and all these holes are basically for reduction of the suction during the printing and also to make uh, a way so the resin, the liquid resin, can escape. With loot, usually we place them in an invisible area, but sometimes, uh, when it isn't possible, we just fill them after the printing. It's very, very easy, I'll show you how. Now that our model is here, we have to organize our build plate. Basically, you have to go to a higher point of view and move your objects to make them feel inside the blue square without touching themselves, because if I place, for example, the sword here, it will be colliding with the, the base. It won't work very well for printing. So I'll click here and drag, so the objects aren't touching themselves, aren't colliding. Oh, and I forgot to say, all these pillars here, you, you see in the model, uh, on the base, they are the supports. They are made so each part of the model has a connection with the build plate. The build plate here is facing up. But when you print the model, you will see everything will be printed this way. And in the design, for example, we, if we don't have any supports, when printing the arm, in this layer, for example, the arm will be floating. It will be printing in the air, so it wouldn't work. The supports guarantee that there is a connection between the arm and the build plate. Basically, this is the, the reason why we use supports. But if you are get, just getting started, I highly recommend you to use press-supported models. So getting back into organizing the, the files, I can click here at this T, this cube, and I have a top view. If I click the I, I turn on or off the perspective. I prefer without perspective. And here, I will organize everything. If this down area, the white squares, are colliding, there is no problem, because they are just supports. Just keep an eye if the, the model itself, the blue areas, are colliding. Also, this blue line represents the limits of the printer, but it actually goes until here, so if I print something here, it will work. It's just a safe area, so if possible, keep things more uh, in the center. So here I have all the four parts 
none of them are going outside the the blue area everything's good also be aware that maybe the the white area is okay but this area this tip of the sword for example is going outside the, the limit area that's why it is red so uh, make sure everything is inside this area as I have a lot of empty space here, I'll add more models to the 3D printing. Because something very cool about this technology is that it doesn't matter how many models you are printing. The printing time will be the same. The only thing that matters is how many layers you will print. So in this case, this is the number. Everything that I add here that doesn't go higher than this higher point it won't increase the printing time. In this case, I'll print also the 32mm version of Uten Iron Hearth. So go here, choose the 32mm folder, support it, and open the Tutubox file. In this case, as he is very small, there is no need for a hollow version. So uh, all the files are solid. Okay, so all my files are here, they are in colliding, everything is right, ready for printing. So to take all these files and transform into a file that my printer will be able to read, I just click slice. And in just one or two seconds, the slicing is done. Here, if I click and slide, I have a preview of each layer that my printer will print. So, for example, if I go here, the first layer will be this, and so on. It is very cool to see how the supports connect to the model, and basically, the, all the files that the printer will read will be images like this. The black represents an area that will be blocked, the UV light will be blocked, and the white uh, areas will be where the UV light will cure the resin. And here we have some information like the, the machine, uh, the time that it will take to print. In this example, it will take 5 hours and 4 minutes. If your slicing process is taking much longer than mine, you might have to go here to settings and disable this option. If it is enabled, uh, the Cheeto box will take a long time to calculate how many milliliters of resin it will be used during the printing so but for me it doesn't matter so i just leave it disabled so once the file is sliced i just have to save the file and here i will choose the name of the file like uten test 4k and save. The saving process may take uh, a bit longer, maybe a few minutes, but you just have to be patient. Once the slicing process is done, I just click here, open folder, and this is the file that I use for my 3D printer. The USB driver is already attached to my computer, so I'll just copy this file, go here and paste it. It's also very cool that the Sonic Mini 4K comes with this frozen ring for a test. Maybe it's a cool and detailed ring, right? And also it comes with Cheeto Box, but an older version, so I'm using the newer one. Once the file is here, it is ready for 3D printing, so let's do it. I'll leave my printer here, in this cabinet, with my other printers, the Shuffle and the Sonic Mini. I have also an Ender 3, which is a FDM printer. I designed this cabinet specially for my printers. As the resin is toxic and there are some fumes during the process, it may be dangerous to breathe next to the printers. This is why the companies recommend to use the printers in a well-ventilated environment. As we are in an office, I installed an exhaust fan taking all the air from the cabinet to the outside. This way, we don't take any risks. 
Ok, now that everything is it in its place, I'll take my USB driver and plug it in the printer. Before we move on, I'll wear my gloves. For this test, I'll use the Aka Grey 4K resin from Frozen. The bottle is opaque, so the resin doesn't receive any light on it. Before we pour it into the printer, it is very important to shake the bottle really well to make sure the resin is very homogeneous. When it stays still for a long time, the chemical components start to separate. Ok, so now I will remove the printer cover, the build plate and pour the resin inside the vat. Be careful not to fill it completely, otherwise it will leak out. I tried to fill only half of it. Now let's put the build plate and the cover back and turn the printer on. Now I'll just click 3D print, choose the UTIN file and hit the go button. Ok, now the printer is done. I left the printer working during the night and now we have to clean the model. Finally, the printing is done. Now I can remove the cover and check it closely. For what I can see, the model looks perfect. Now I'll carefully remove the build plate. To avoid the resin dripping on my floor, I like to use an old plastic tray. At this stage, the model has a lot of uncurled resin around it. Also, be careful with your printer, otherwise it can get dirty really fast. After removing the build plate, it is very important to put the cover back, so the sun won't cure the resin inside the vat. If you plan to print something in the next few days, it is ok to leave the resin inside the vat and use it again. I just use a plastic scraper to mix the resin before the next print to make sure it is homogeneous. If you want to print something in a near future, it is better to remove the resin completely, pouring it inside the resin bottle and cleaning the vat with isopropyl alcohol and paper towel. Now I can see that the printing is perfect, but there is a missing piece. The small base isn't here, which means it detached from the build plate during the process. I'll continue with the cleaning process, but later I'll show you how to fix this kind of issues. So, with the metal scraper, I'll press it against the build plate to remove the printed models. If you scratch a little the build plate, don't worry, it is normal. During this process, it is good to avoid the sunlight. If you get a lot of UV light in this phase, the uncurled resin will start to cure and our model will lose a lot of details. Now it is time to start removing the supports. There are a lot of ways of doing it. For bigger pieces like this base, we can just use our hand to remove them. It is very easy. With some pressure from our fingers, they break. About the sports marks, don't worry. We will remove them later. Be careful not to break the thin parts. At this stage, you can feel the resin is a little soft. This is why we are removing the supports now. Some people remove them after cooling the models. It isn't wrong, but like this, you probably will damage the model much more. After curing, 
the resin gets much harder, so the supports are harder to remove. I always prefer to remove supports before the curing process. In this area, as we have a lot of short supports with the raft on the bottom, I'll use the clipper to remove them. So far the model looks like it's melted, but don't worry, after we clean it, the details will be visible. As you can see, it is a very messy process. This is why this tray is used exclusively for this. Everything the resin touches gets really sticky, so be careful and use gloves all the time. Now it's time to clean all my tools. It is very important to keep them clean, especially the build plate. For this, I'll use isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. I like to use a spray bottle with the alcohol for this. All these broken supports aren't completely cured yet, so they can pollute the environment. Before throwing them away, make sure to leave them in the sun for a few minutes so they can get cured. This way, they can be treated like plastic. Now, we will remove the uncurred resin from the models. For this, we will use isopropyl alcohol. Here in Brazil, we can find it in drugstores. I'll also use a cheap plastic container to pull the alcohol in. It is important to say that this alcohol is toxic and very flammable, so keep it away from heat and keep the bottle sealed. Now I'll dip all the pieces in the alcohol. For the hollow pieces, it is important to make sure all the air from inside gets out. Here you can see the bubbles. This way, we make sure we also remove the, the uncurried resin from inside the models. With the container closed, I'll shake it for a few seconds to make sure the model is really clean and has no uncurried resin around it. Don't shake it too hard, so you don't break anything apart. The alcohol has a really strong smell, so using a mask may be a good idea if you are more sensitive to it. Now I'll remove the pieces and give them a final shake in the alcohol. I will also shake them outside to make sure all the alcohol from inside is removed. After that, I'll leave the models on a paper towel for like 10 minutes while the alcohol evaporates. During all these steps, avoid contact with the sunlight. Here we can see really well the alcohol from inside the model coming out from the holes. This alcohol is very cloudy, but we can still use multiple times for cleaning. One bottle is enough to clean a lot of minis, so I'll use this funnel to put it back to its original bottle for using again in the future. I like to flip the models to make sure both sides are dry. If you feel that any area is a little shiny with uncooled resin, you can use the paper towel for cleaning it. 
Also, don't forget to clean your working area. Now it is time to cure the model. At this stage, the resin is hard but not completely cured. So we have two options. The first one is to leave it in the sun for a few minutes. However, this process may take longer and you need a very sunny day. If you live in a cloudy country or are working at night, it won't work. The second option, that I think is better, is to use an artificial UV light source. Here I use a very cheap UV lamp that is used for gel nails. You can find it very easily online. After turning it on, I just have to place it on top of the models and leave there for about 5 or 10 minutes. I also like to flip the model during this process to make sure both sides are curved. Here at LUT, as we print a lot of models every day, we needed a bigger curing station. There are some options online, but we decided to build our own curing chamber with a big box and some UV LEDs. If you want a video explaining how to build one, leave a comment below. Now let me show you how I fixed the issue I had with the small base missing from the build plate. The first step is to remove the resin from the vat. For this, I'll pour all the resin back to its original bottle. To make my life easier, I use the funnel that comes with the printer. When we have missing parts during the printing, they may be floating in the vat and these pieces may damage your printer. So to make sure the resin is clean, I'll use this simple sieve. There are much better ones out there, with smaller holes, but this one was the only one I had around. For cleaning the resin from the vat sides, I'm using the isopropyl alcohol and paper towels, your best friend. And here we can see the base that was missing. It got stuck in the fab instead of the build plate in the first layers. This is why I removed all the resin from the vat to check issues like this. If I try to print a new model with something stuck to the fab, when the build plate goes down, it will press this piece against the LCD screen and it may break it. So, to avoid it, we will remove this resin. Take care not to damage the fab. We can use a plastic scraper or try to push the resin from below. Now the vat is clean, but I still have to solve the problem that I have with the build plate. First, I'll take the sandpaper that comes with the printer and sand it for a few seconds, always in the same direction. This texture will help the models to attach to the build plate. Next, I'll clean it with isopropyl alcohol to remove all the resin and dust. Now, to make sure the build plate is aligned, I'll do the same process I did in the beginning of the video, this time with more caution, to make sure the align is perfect. After this, I was able to use the printer again, and this time I was able to print the small base. Now that the curing process is done, I can touch the miniature without gloves. It isn't toxic anymore. And now it is very clear how detailed this print is. The details are super sharp, I love it. The next step is to remove the imperfections and support marks. Even the loot supports being really well made, they leave some tiny marks. To make the print really smooth, we can use different tools. The scalpel is a good option for removing big supports. For big and flat areas like this, the sandpaper is perfect. I can put it on the table and rub the base on top of it. See? It's super smooth now. For the corners, I can use a nail file. or the precision file. In some small areas like here, where it is hard to reach with the sandpaper or files, 
I like to use the scalpel to scrape the surface and remove the support marks. Now let's fill the drain holes. Some holes like this one on the arms we don't need to fill as the other parts will cover them. However, other ones like this on the legs or this one on the anvil are visible. For filling the holes you can use different kinds of materials like mealy putt or green stuff. Here I use a simple epoxy putty. I just have to mix the both parts really well and apply to the model. For more precision, I'm using the scalpel. After the putter is hard, I can sand it for a better finish. Now, I'll clean the model with a soft brush to remove all dust from the sanding. Ok, I have a clean model without supports or dust and the holes are filled. The last step is to glue all pieces together. And this is very simple. You can use any kind of super glue. Just a few drops on the contact areas. You hold the pieces on their places for a few seconds and it's done. It is important to make sure there are no supports in the contact areas. Here I noticed a small one. So, before gluing the anvil on the base, I'll remove it. For the small one, it is the same thing, just be careful not to use a lot of glue and have it leaking out. And here is the final result. The quality of this printer is really amazing, check all these details out. We can see even the stitches on the clothes. This is the third printer I got from Frozen and I'm always amazed by the product. The printers are getting bigger, better, faster and more affordable in a crazy speed. If you want to buy a Sonic Mini 4K or any projects from Frozen, I'll leave a link below in the description. With the printed model, we already can use it in our RPG campaigns board games or to make a cool collection. But if you want to make your games even more immersive or to make your shelf 
even more beautiful, you definitely should paint it. If you think you need to be a great talent artist to paint minis, you are wrong. With cheap material and simple techniques, you can paint your minis. When you download the files to print using Iron Heart, link below, you have access to an exclusive painting class. Also, in our channel, there is a very complete video teaching everything you need to know to get into this amazing hobby and start painting your minis right now. You really should check it out after this video. I'm sure you'll love it. Please leave a comment below if you liked this video or if you have any questions about 3D printing. We can do a video soon answering these questions. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click on the bell and hit the like button. Thanks a lot guys, see you in the next video.